Welcome to the Northern Affinity Video Podcast. During this session, we will be having an unedited discussion with an expert. And what I'll be planning to do is during our discussion, get them to teach me something. Teach me about something that's of interest, but also they are an expert in. I'm Michael Edwards and I'm the founder of the Northern Affinity. And I will tap into our wonderful community to bring you along on my drive for self-improvement and my desire to learn. So please connect with me on on various social media platforms, whether it's LinkedIn or Instagram or Twitter. I'd love to hear from you what what subjects you'd like to learn more about, what subjects you think it'd be good for me to learn about. So please, you know, get in contact and let me know. All the details will be in the show notes and you can send me an email or contact me by by the various platforms. I really hope you enjoy the show. So I'm delighted to say that uh, on this episode of the video podcast, I'm joined by Jamie. And for those who are watching us on the video, we're going to talk all about automation today. So um, firstly, welcome to the video podcast, Jamie. Hi, thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Oh, it's great. I'm looking forward to this conversation. Um, something I want to do more with anyway, that's for certain. So um, before we kind of talk about automation in a bit more detail, do you want to tell us a little bit more about you, your business and kind of what you do? Yeah, so I'm obviously Jamie. Uh, my company is called Everon. Uh, we're based in Leeds, and ultimately we are a managed service IT provider. So that means we can do things like your IT support, cybersecurity, uh, business automation, which also we're going to talk a bit about today. Um, we have been going since 2008, um, and we work kind of predominantly within regulated industries, so legal sector, financial sector, that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, always happy to chat to people and things like automation are now kind of the more interesting part of my day to day. So rather than talk about boring security or IT support, we can now talk about something which is a bit more glamorous, I guess, <laughs> which is good. Is, is this the, like the sexy side of IT, is it, then automation? I'd say so, because it, it's, um, it's traditional IT, I guess, is more like uh, a bit of a chore. You need it. It's, you know, like it's a... It's not a want, it's a need, whereas automation gives you time back, gives you some freedom. It's kind of a desirable product or service. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, yeah, I think, it, I think it is for many of us. So I think a good place to start is what is automation? So, yeah, ultimately, I guess um, in its simplest form, automation is the service whereby we take a human process or workflow and we reduce the human input required to do it. So it might not be that you achieve uh, removing that human element completely, but it might be we remove it and as much as we can or anywhere where there's a repetitive, tedious task. Um, so yeah, we'd automate it with technology, essentially. Yeah, so basically automation is there to help us in doing what we do, do it quicker, do it better, do it faster, whatever, whatever it might be. So that we yeah. can, so we can focus on the things that we need to focus on, whatever that may be. Yeah, so I mean, it's not, uh, although it might feel like it sometimes, like we're heading towards a kind of Terminator style apocalypse where you know people are made redundant. We're not there at the minute. It's more a case of, like I said, giving you time back. So especially as a smaller business, people wear many hats and it can be a massive struggle to kind of get through everything they want to be doing with their time, as well as doing all these tedious tasks that actually need to be done. So the more we can give away to technology, the more use and the more value you can get out of your actual time in your nine to five or whatever, whatever kind of work pattern you have. No, absolutely. I, mean, I do bits of automation in my business. I don't know how much you know, it helps. So um, can I guess jumping straight into it, you know, what, what can we do then? What can we automate? Because um, there may be people listening to this who think it's one of those things that's maybe out of reach of them. You know, there might be a small business owner, it might be, it might be, yes, it's okay talking about the big businesses doing it, but for me, I, I can't do it. I, I know you'll um, you'll not agree with that, so it'd be interesting to know uh, what can we do. Yes, but I mean, ultimately, um, the rule of thumb I like to kind of say is anything that's a repetitive task can be automated, no matter how big or small. Like anything that has a repetitive workflow process can be automated. Um, obviously, there's a few examples I've got. So, for example, you could start really small and basic, or you could 
on a whole process and department potentially depending on what you do um, but some real quick and simple ones uh, that you could look at are things like social media so you already might have an automation tool in effect for scheduling social media posts and stuff like that but there are automations now that understand sentiment and things like that so rather than you scouring the internet or social media for negative posts about your business or your service you could set up an automation that would scan for your keywords or your business name, whatever it might be, a negative sentiment. That could then drop you an email when that tweet or Facebook post, LinkedIn post, whatever else was mentioned. So you're no longer wasting kind of dead time looking for these things, but it's proactively pushed towards you. Um, you could then, in just the social media example, devote your time to better content to put out on social media rather than constantly checking stuff that was coming in and out would be an example of kind of a real quick and easy one you could do. Um, there are quite a few other ones. I know we talked recently in a meeting we had or a chat we had about keeping track of time and how uh, it can be difficult nowadays with so much noise coming into your email and things like that. And um, I personally like the idea that you've gone with where you kind of have a, you have set times of the day. I know your all reply says you're on the check emails within these windows. So you could have an automation, for example, that whenever you're tagged in an email, so you're actually tagged in the body of an email saying, ah, X, Y, and Z, can you do this? The workflow could automatically create a to-do list item for you. So you no longer had to necessarily go in and read the email or reply to the email and waste time that way. But instead, you just had a definitive task item in your Outlook to-do list where you can then just work, go through and work through. So that kind of really slick, like uh, basic start to finish processes that you can do all within one system. For stuff outside of that, um, again, the same logic applies. We could automate a whole business if we had the kind of workflow and the structure in place to do so. But um, the sort of things that are kind of the next level up are if you have an accounts package and you receive a lot of incoming bills and invoices and things like that, you probably have quite a tedious manual job of entering all of those details into your accounts system. There's now automation tools that will specialize in scanning those invoices and putting them straight into your accounts system. So we're no longer talking about just working within one solution, but we're spanning two different pieces of software now or two different elements of a business. Um, and then going even further from there, I know you've kind of got a little bit of an automation in this video recording, haven't you? So we've got the first part, which is pre-recorded. We have this chart and then you might have kind of an outro. You could work towards having something that would then take that video edit it or kind of trim the edges and then actually schedule it to go out on YouTube. And then you could have, again, notifications around YouTube where people had talked about it or mentioned it. So you could then go into the comment section and reply to those people and do those things. Um, so kind of there is no limit to what you can do. Um, I think going back to the earlier point you mentioned about people not realizing or people think it's outreach. Traditionally, um, this sort of technology was only available at enterprise level with like the Microsoft Cloud, especially nowadays, being kind of pretty standard amongst any business, no, no matter how big or small. The Microsoft Power Automate and the actual Microsoft 365 Cloud gives you access to a lot of this automation already. People just don't realize it's there. And then you also have tools like Zapier, things like that, that again are freely available, but people maybe just don't know how to interact with them or what, what's possible. Yeah, I mean, the, I know myself and I've done bits automation of the business. And funny if I, I think I mentioned it on a, an event the other day, we're just about to launch, um, well, early in 2023, something that um, automates introductions between the people in our group. Um, Basically, you know, so it's like a lot of these, what, what I, I see as good automation is you kind of do the work at the front end of setting it all up, essentially. Um, and then what it'll do is it'll it'll do the work for you. And it's something I used to do when we first started. We had a smaller number than we do now with people in the group. I could do it manually, and that was fine at the time, but yeah. we've grown to a size we can't. And there is that tool. And, you know, I didn't know this tool was out there. I'd actually gone looking for something similar previously, not found anything. Um, but someone else has made me aware of it now. So there is there is all sorts of things out there. And um, it's just not, to me, that's something like that for me is not just about saving time. It's in, essentially imp improving the service that I'm offering. And that is a big driver as well. 
Yeah, I mean, so two two things on that then. So I once heard the analogy that um, if you're so busy doing the task, so let's say you that manual, you're speaking that manual process all the time, and you haven't got the time to step back and front load some time into an automation, um, you effectively just imagine you put through a log, but your saw has gone really blunt, and you just you're still going away for ages and ages. It's sometimes quick, although it doesn't feel like it in the moment to step back sharpen that blade and then go back at it um, and essentially that's what you're doing with the automation you take a step back from being stuck in that repetitive cycle you're going to invest a little bit of time but then you're going to forever be getting that back in the future so i think it's important to do that sort of stuff um and i'd, I'd say as well you don't always have to jump to your end goal so it's more a like an evolution than a revolution so start by doing the kind of really quick easy bits that you can easily kind of give away right now and then build in and in kind of your version two all right i can go a step further and go a step further um in terms of the kind of process and the way i'd encourage people to approach this initially would be to look at where the time's used weekly so i don't know if people actually record time and where they like invest in it and things like that but to try and get an accurate reflection of where the daily or weekly time goes the tasks that take up most of that time i'd be focusing on kind of drilling into those um and i'd start off by like so we have a big whiteboard we generally do this on or we do it on kind of paper initially we draw out that workflow process so you start and you're able how many steps are there in between to get there and what happens at each step and then as i say you might find you can just automate one step or it might be you can automate the whole process or bits in between but just work on it as a kind of step-by-step -step process so if you just got one repetitive action instantly start with that one and kind of build it into the process, have a few weeks or months with that, and then go back and revisit it. Right now, can we do this next step and this next step? And I think that's probably the way people need to look at it initially, especially if you've not really used automation before, because um, it can feel a bit daunting to give away that responsibility and things like that. But doing it in a smaller, more man manageable chunk will motivate you to do it more. And I'll also make sure you kind of don't go for the holy grail of automating the whole thing, just have it fall over and you know step back and not really do any more. Yeah, and no, I've probably got a few examples in, in my business where it's made such a huge difference. I, I, one that particularly jumps out to me is, um, as you know, we do, do, do quite a lot of an event. So when we, um, when we put an event out there, we put it on Eventbrite and, and, and various other places. What I used to have to do was load all the information onto Eventbrite and then do the same on our website. Essentially, take that same information up, essentially copy and paste it across and create on the website. And all we've done is the event page is now, um, it's just like, it's basically a link to Eventbrite. When we put it on Eventbrite, it goes on our website. So yes, we're, still, we're not automating the whole process, but we have probably reduced the time I do on that by 50%, which is, it probably just a bit now, but at one point it was several hours a week that that saved straight away. And it was, it was right. not a massive automation, not a complex one at all, but the, the difference it made was huge. I think the, uh, the flip side of that is also you saved all that time. I think in terms of, and I've been on your website and booked through it, I, I haven't noticed that. It's been seamless for me. So I think the best automations as well are, are exactly that. The end user or the person that's using it doesn't really understand that there's any automation going on. It's really seamless. Um, and then you've got that time you mentioned, if it was seven hours and you've said three and a half hours, you'd be best spent using that time. If you still want to get involved in that process, doing those bits that human couldn't do. So picking up the phone and ringing up someone and fighting them for coming to the event. So they've had a really seamless experience with an automation, but not realized it. And then that time you've saved back, you can actually then go and kind of do something that a computer is never going to be able to make, pick up the phone and make a call or have a face-to-face -face conversation like this. So you could spend your time doing those things, which really add value to to kind of your product or your service. No, no, absolutely. Like you say, spending time doing the, the important stuff and things that you can't automate. Um, so one thing I was going to ask you about is, so like everything you do, there is pitfalls, there is things that you need to look out for, things to be aware of. So when it comes to automating, what, what kind of things should people be thinking about or things that might go wrong that they need to just be aware of? Yeah, initially, so um, there's a few things really, but even so simple is kind of your best step. So if you're going to take something from a really manual process to an automated process in one big leap, 
you've got a lot of variables you're trying to manage, especially if that automation like allows data entry to flow between different systems and softwares. So I'd always, first of all, draw it out on paper what I'm trying to achieve and then work out the best steps, logical process. So in the event that something doesn't quite work in the way you imagine it to, or when you actually run it and somebody interacts with it, it puts different information in the system that I'm expecting, you can kind of resolve the issues as you go at each element rather than looking kind of through a big uh, catalog or a big like long um, automation list. The other thing I'd say is be careful about the actual tools you use and where the data goes. So for example, for your really basic automation where you just automate something within one system and you already use that system, there's no risks, no data ever leaves that system. But if you try to join two, three, four different pieces of software together, if there's ever a risk where the data leaves in one system and isn't securely managed in between the two systems, especially when it comes to GDPR and all the kind of data security going on, you're still liable to manage that data even when it leaves those systems. So I'd first of all, make sure that any automation or any tools you use are GDPR compliant and things like that as a bare minimum. Um, and I would also make sure that I, the tools have the correct security in them to interact with the different solutions. So you don't want to have a really secure app, for example, put a hole in it so you can link two different apps together, but then let all the hackers and everybody else see these big holes that can be kind of used. But to be honest, I'd start with just the Microsoft 365 Cloud and a tool called Power Automate. So if you, if you Google Power Automate, it's part of the 365 Cloud and ecosystem. I think probably 99% of people will already have Microsoft Cloud anyway, or 365. Um, and you can literally just start. There's, a, there's an actual Power Automate template library. So these are actually pre-configured automations that Microsoft have developed for you. Um, you literally can just go out and find the template or the automation that matches what you actually want to achieve. And you just plug in the two start point and the end point. And because the system is already pre-templated, it will do the work for you. So I'd start with that kind of approach where you're not having to worry about all these extra variables and just pick the kind of pre-set automation to, to run with and then build out from there basically because the templates all use Power Automate. You can edit them and build in them, but it gives you that start and end point in a clean kind of package right at the start that's been tried and tested by somebody else. So I'd say that that kind of the best place to start. And yeah, just um, just be aware of the changes so that you, if we, we have like a revision and a, a change table here, so whenever we make change to a process internally, this isn't for clients, but for us, and we change the workflow of the process, we have a document that shows exactly what's been changed at what date. So if ever we do have issues in the future, we can always revert back to previous standards or we understand maybe what change affected and created the issues that we had. No, no, that makes sense because obviously things change in your business, what you do, how you do it. So you're going to have to be um, evolving those automations at you all the time. So, um, yeah, it's not just a case of setting them up once and it'll go forever. Now, it might do, depending on what it is, but more likely it's to change and adapt over time. Yeah, those simple processes tend to be pretty clean. But like you said, as you build into kind of more bespoke or more kind of advanced automations, yeah, you, as your business grows, the software might change that you work with, like the people might interact with stuff differently. So it's important to be structured and kind of accountable with the changes you make and the, the stuff you put in, just, just like you would with a member of staff, really. If you give a member of staff that particular task and they did it differently every single time they did it and they were all sick and nobody knew how to do it, your business would struggle at that point, wouldn't it? So treat their automation in exactly the same way you would. If you can't um, document it and how it's done to pass to even a different automation or revert it back to a member of staff, you probably haven't quite understood it enough to be automating it in the first place. No, makes it makes sense. So I know we've used kind of a few examples so far, um, but if, if you know someone's either only ever dipped the toe in the water or never done any kind of automation, where, where would you kind of start? And, and I know every business is different; they're all have different requirements. But there's probably some kind of common themes running through it for a lot of us. So, is there any kind of things that we've not mentioned that you think would be useful for people to start to look at different whether it's systems or or just yeah? You mentioned email earlier. Um, funny story on that: I once had a colleague who. 
uh, automated setup where whenever they were CC'd into an email, they, they automated it so it's straight into their uh, junk file. Um, <laughs> so I wasn't. I, I think the words were: if I weren't important enough to be copied into it and only CC'd, then I'm not. I'm not going to read it. Um, but obviously, that, that could be used in different ways. But yeah, is there anything we haven't really covered? No, I mean, I think like you said, it really is different to to where you, you invest your time or what you do. I mean, the the junk mail kind of when you carbon copied into something it's probably quite an extreme example that would only work for certain people. I imagine if I do that, I'd get a lot of uh, negative emails to follow it. Um, but yeah, I guess you've you've got to work out where your time's going. So I'd start by kind of even if it's, you've got a rough guide of this much time because. I did an exercise uh, probably two years ago where I had this um, sort of diamond on my desk with different services on it. And every time I turned it over, it started a timer running. So I had a side on it when I was doing emails, I had a side when I was doing my accounts, for example, I had a side when I was doing calls with clients. Um, and I would have never imagined how much time actually went into my email. So I, from that learn, I need to change the way I interact with Outlook and do all these different things. So for me, the kind of automations that I have within my Outlook is in kind of, uh, there's, a, there's a tool called Sandbox, I think it's called. You can plug into your email and it'll instantly learn your kind of working habits and it'll take, for example, like all newsletters and it'll read the sentiment in an email. And if it knows it's not critical or time sensitive, it'll put it into a hidden inbox. So you might have a hundred emails coming in a day. 10 of them might be time critical, like half the room replied in that day, but they were nice to cut and they'll pull them away. Um, so something like that might be a great start if you're stuck in the same boat I was where you stuck on these emails all day, every day, and they were taking up probably half my working week and I didn't realise it. So I think analysing your time, first of all, would give you the areas to focus on. Email might be a good area to start for everybody and something like Sandbox might be a perfect. They do a trial thing, that might be a paid product, but if they do a trial, you can do it for 30 days. Plugs into email and it just creates your two inboxes essentially, like what you need to action now and what you can wait till later. And then you can start working more efficiently with your time that way. But the um, the Power Automate Template Cloud is probably your next start step. So understand where your time goes. Um, go to the, just Google Power Automate Templates and there's a Microsoft will be the top link. It breaks it down into categories of what all the automations do. So like social media, accounts, email, Literally, you can either type in a search box or you can just scroll through the different areas and then pick something that's high value to you. It'll embed pretty much straight away and then just trial it, see how it goes. Do it do it on a process map. Maybe it would save you a lot of time that you can afford to kind of test with and then build a bit of confidence that way and go from there. No, absolutely. And obviously, you touched on the thing I do. You know, I'm not sure. I guess it is automation to a degree. I, I use something called uh, Boomerang, which basically just means that my in, my emails only come into my inbox a couple of times a day, so it stops that distraction. But I still can send emails. I can still go into my emails and send them out. So I need to do that on a fairly regular basis, but I'm just not getting distracted by those things. And I just set aside a couple of time bits of time each day, generally kind of early in the day and towards the end of the day to, to deal with those. And um, one of the unintended consequences of that is I find that, I realize how many emails I get in that I don't need to do anything with, and I've unsubscribed to a lot of things. Um, I generally do that maybe once a week where I just write, right, I'm just going to unsubscribe, spend 20 minutes now unsubscribing. And since I've done that, instead of each time I've got my emails come in and I've got 40 or 50, I'm probably down to about 20 now. Um, so again, it, it's kind of a, a consequence of the automation has really made a big difference. So it's kind of the unintended stuff that often comes from it. Definitely. I don't think you maybe quite thought it was automation because it was so simple right at the start. Um, but ultimately, it's the systems deciding kind of when you should see emails and when you're not based on a logic. So that's an example of really slick automation where you've not even really realized you're using it. And again, like something uh, to, to kind of back up my example of starting off slowly and building up. If you're kind of at that level now where that works for you, in the example you've just given me of unsubscribing from emails, you could go one step further. You could build into this process, right? If I get, I don't know, 10 emails from Jamie at everon.co.uk that I've never replied to, use the automation to automatically unsubscribe. 
So even though um, you might apply that logic to 10 different companies that all email you, the process will be the same. If you're not using them and you no longer want them, find the unsubscribe button and unsubscribe from it. So you could teach your computer and an automation to do that as long as you could give it the logic. So if I haven't replied in 10 emails or 100 or six months, I clearly don't want these. Let's let the, the computer and the automation unsubscribe you from them so you're not wasting time kind of doing it every month. So that will be like an evolution of something you're already using. And then again, you could go a little bit further each time, couldn't you? Sorry, I just realised I was on the wrong way. And I just, when you were talking, then I was thinking, um, I, um, when the yeah. pandemic first hit, I was doing about five Zoom calls a day, um, probably like most of us. And I was spending a lot of time. Um, so I arranged a meeting. I would set up, yeah, I use Google Calendar, put it into a Google Calendar, go to Zoom, create the meeting, copy and paste the details across, essentially. And all, all, all I did then, obviously, I realised you can basically integrate the two with each other. And now when I go to my calendar and I put meeting with on my calendar, there's a little button there that says, make it a Zoom meeting. And it just automatically does it for me and it sends it across. And now I, I, I forgot I did that, but that's a good, I guess that's a good automation, isn't it? Because it's just really simple. Yeah. Quite as much I used to do during the kind of restriction of the pandemic. Um, it still saves me time now. Yeah, definitely. Like, like it's, it's all around us. We just don't necessarily realise in the really polished automations. Um, and there's, there's no reason why we can't do more. Um, because people just, I think, like you said, going back to that original bit at the start, think it's not quite available or it's, it's out of reach when reality, anything nowadays like that, that's a repetitive task, the cloud can do it for you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, um... That's been great. And you've, like I said, you've made me think about some of the things I've done before I didn't realise and things I could do more in the future because I think it's, um, like I say, it, it gives you time doing the things that you need and want to, to do. Um, so last thing for me, Jim, is if, if people want to find out a little bit more about you and, and, and the business, where, where are the best places to go and where are the best places to look, especially maybe regarding the automation stuff? Yeah, so if our website is everon.co.uk, which is E-V-E-R-O-N.co.uk. So on there, um, you can book time with me. If people want to talk about automation or any other aspects of IT. Um, we do have a page on automation and some example automations and things like that that we can help people with as well. Um, but I'm on there or LinkedIn, Jamie Marshall. Um, you should find me on there or through the Northern Affinity, obviously, partner network. Yeah, absolutely, and, and we'll put all the um, notes in the in the show description as well, both on the YouTube page for people watching and all of the podcast listings for people um, listening to it. Um, so finally, for me, you know, really, really interesting chat. Thank you so much, Jimmy. That's really, really helped, and I'm sure a lot of people have got got a lot for that. So, so thank you. No problem at all. Thanks for having me. I hope you enjoyed this uh, chat today and like me, you learned something new from our wonderful expert. Uh, so if you'd like to hear from more of our sessions, please subscribe on whatever platform that you get your podcast from to hear more. Um, and also we'd love to meet you at some point at one of our upcoming events. We, the Northern Affinity Hall Defence Ball across the north of England. Um, and we'd love to meet new people and then uh, have guests along. So please come along and check out our website or all the details in the show notes. Thank you very much for listening and see you next time.